If you want to lose weight, cut back on calories, right? And we know that many products contain hidden calories and added sugar. We also know that sugar contributes to diabetes and to obesity. So doesn't it make sense to cut back on our sugar intake? Well, perhaps, but if you substitute your sugar intake with for non-caloric artificial sweeteners, does it follow that you will be healthier and reduce your risk for obesity and diabetes? Or can these chemicals that lack calories contribute to diabetes and lead to weight gain? Yeah, it made a lot of sense at the beginning. The logic was almost infallible. You, you'd figure that if you take in less in the way of calories, that you're going to be ahead of the game, particularly sugar. So why not use an artificial sweetener? Except it didn't turn out that way. They it, didn't do that part of the study. No, they just they assumed. They made an assumption, yeah. I think they actually knew, but they didn't report it. That's usually what happens when you have a company that's making something like that. They'll do the studies because they're curious, but then they suppress the studies and don't publish them. And when there's a lot of money involved, as there is in the artificial sweeteners industry, it's a huge thing. And then when you've got political pull, like you do with Donald Rumsfeld with the aspartame fiasco, this is what happens. You bring it all forward. So it turns out that these artificial sweeteners do the reverse of what they're inclined to do, and they've hoodwinked the doctors and the Diabetes Association into recommending them because of that logic that was 40 years ago adopted. Well, one of the things we found out is that they affect the microbiome. That's the friendly bacteria in our intestine. Mm -hmm. So how does this pan out? Well, nobody knows exactly why it does that, but what we do know is that the ecosystem in the gut, which is called the microbiome, is a system that has at least a thousand different species of microbes and ten, ten times as many microbes as we have cells in our bodies. We're looking at trillions and trillions of microbes. And it has a profound effect on the biochemistry of our body. There's more metabolic activity in the gut than there is in any organ system in the human body. So it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, Vicki, that when we feed healthy people who are not on artificial sweeteners, artificial sweeteners for just one week, their, the way they handle sugar changes. They become insulin resistant and more able to develop type 2 diabetes and obesity. And don't they absorb more glucose? In studies that were done in mice, it showed that too. So in humans, we have the study that's showing that if you go on ahead and you take artificial sweeteners for just a week, it makes those changes. Then they took this a little bit further. If you give the stool of a person who's, who's been given the artificial sweetener and who's developed this insulin resistance, you give the stool to a rat, the rat develops insulin resistance as well. But if you treat with antibiotics first, it doesn't. So we know it's the microflora that's doing this. And who would have thunk it? <laughs> yeah, right? who would have thunk it? That's right. Well, the other thing is, is it increases your appetite. Mm -hmm. Increases your appetite and all the other stuff that we're talking about that has to do with insulin levels is a point too. And think of all the times that people use these things. Um, even like if you go to a candy shop, they'll have mm. a section that are diabetic candies. So they're candies that have mm. these artificial sweeteners. Right. And then you go to the, you know, to the coffee shop and they've got the artificial sweeteners for your coffees and mm -hmm. your frappuccinos and all those different the things. Whole the soft drinks are in low calorie foods. The whole <laughs> thing is turning out to be exactly the reverse of what was purported. And, in addition, we know that people who consume artificial sweeteners for a long time have a higher risk of heart attacks and strokes. So what are we achieving here? You know, you've, we've done studies on, on rats for, for years that show that if you feed a rat a lot of this artificial sweetener material, that they become fat and lazy. And it's no surprise that, you know, we have this, the parallel with a lot of human beings who are overweight and, and kind of sluggish consuming the most artificial sweeteners. Well, I know, too. I was reading about Splenda, and that can damage mm. your kidney and your uh, mm -hmm. your kidneys and, and liver. your liver. Yeah. And some of the other ones are neurotoxins. Well, they're not found on the planet in any natural form. <laughs> that's a clue. And then in our infinite wisdom, we make them find out what they can do that's positive and then convince you that you need it. Then you'll buy it. But in actuality, anytime something like that is developed, you've got to be very careful about it. 
particularly when there's a company that's prom- that's promoting it that has a huge conflict of interest because they're making profit profit off of it. You got a problem. So we should stick close to nature. Sugar itself is far better for you than artificial sugar. I shouldn't say it that way. It's not nearly as bad as that's better. artificial sweeteners are And some for you. people think that stevia is a healthy choice. It might be, but we need to do those studies on this too and see what it does to the microbiome and how that affects insulin resistance.